The story of J.K. Rowling, Sir Salman Rushdie, Margaret Atwood are among the high-profile figures who've signed a letter warning of an intolerant climate for free speech. The 150 signatories have said that the recent protests for racial and social justice are a needed reckoning. However, at the same time, uh, they've condemned what they describe as the weakening of open debate in favour of ideological conformity. The letter, it's so its so serious this, by the way, the letter published in Harper's Magazine comes amid a debate over cancel culture where public figures face criticism for perceived acts of offence. So is debate dead? Ruth Smith is chief executive at the Index of Censorship and Nonprofit Organisation Campaigning and Defending Free Expression Worldwide. Ruth, afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Good to have you with us. I mean, you spent time in the House of Commons, of course, so you know what debate looks like and robust debate at that. But the last time I looked, nobody wanted to stop it. No, I think there is an issue here about a chilling effect on debate and about how easy it is to try and bully people out of having a conversation and about education. And I think as the country is becoming increasingly polarised and as the world is, that what we're seeing is if anyone raises their head above the parapet to actually initiate a conversation, then too many people from across the political spectrum, spectrum are quite trying to shut it down. And that is not going to make us a cohesive society. It's not going to make us an educated society. It also does huge harm to your own campaign if you mm. can't have a conversation with people about why you're right and you believe them to be wrong in a civilised way. We're meant to be a civilised country. And yeah. I think it's the chilling effect that this is having on debate. Do we none know... Of the people... Sorry, Ruth, carry on. Sorry. I was going to say, none of the people that signed this letter don't have a personal platform. They're, they're, they are protected in what they say. But I think what they um, I think why they've done this is that other people aren't protected in the same way as sure. them. And even when they have engaged, they are getting shouted at or abuse or you know, yeah. a huge amount of criticism. And the, the bit that confuses me and bothers me, Ruth, I mean, there's lots of this that, that should I think should concern us all, frankly. But, you know, you will get somebody post something on Facebook, for example. There was a story recently. I can't even remember what the post was, but it certainly wasn't anything illegal. Otherwise, the you know, plod would have been round to his house. But he posted something that sort of went went against a perceived conventional view and lost his job for it. And the reason he lost his job is because loads of people piled in, started up some kind of campaign online to get this man to lose his job. Nobody could really identify the individuals, but it was it sort of worked. And that's the bit that I find most distressing about this, is that whoever this group of people are, and I'm sure it's not all just one specific group, who are suggesting that either transgression of thought or difference of opinion um, is akin to second degree murder do seem to have some success i think that they have had some success and even that there will be lots of well-informed people who just don't want to participate in debate because they think that you know, for want of a better world, the mob might come for them. So there mm. is definitely a chilling effect on our debate. The issue is, though, and, you know, we've got... There are always naturally going to be red lines on free speech. We have the right... You and I, and, you know, we both have had platforms, we both are on this platform, have the right to say what we want when we want. That doesn't mean there won't be consequences to that. But what are those consequences? And since when did we not have grown-up conversations about these issues i just don't think it's helping anybody and what it does mean is that as a society we are increasingly more intolerant rather mm. than tolerant of each other and that doesn't help yeah that that's the that that's the curious you know, our, our anthropological journey you might have thought ruth would be going the other way we've become <laughs> less tolerant of, of these views um and that seems, and, and bearing in mind, social media is meant to be about an expansion of platforms, allowing people who previously didn't have the conch to be able to pitch up and have a voice where previously it was only the select few that had that voice. And yet, simultaneously, along with that explosion of platforms where people can speak out, uh, we also have this weird um, digital courtroom that seems to take place on a minute by minute basis trying to hound people out of their own existence for having a different opinion i think one of the things that we've got to be really wary of i mean social media is an incredible force for good and it can also be a force for ill um 
in, and we've seen it today with Dawn Butler getting death threats. You know, I had hor- horrendous experiences on social media, mm. but it provides a huge opportunity for those people who don't have a voice to be heard. The issue is making sure that everybody can be heard. And one of the things that I think has genuinely been missing in the conversation about social media, especially given as a technology, it is still so new for us, really. I mean, you know, we talk about it as a normal day-to-day part of our worlds because it is, but sure. 15 years ago, it never, you know, it wasn't. Um, but it's about how we are digital citizens, how we have a responsibility to each other to engage in civilised behaviour. Um, and on the extremes, that isn't happening. Mm. So I think, you know, there is a way in which the social media self-censors and sh- um, and uh, part of this is making sure that people are civilised and grown up. But even if you look at what is said about any politician or anyone i'm sure you today on your social media there will be some very interesting and frankly outrageous comments um put up about you about me about anybody and because people can take three seconds if they're having a really bad day to Mm. put something up that's really offensive we've got to be much more responsible about how we talk to each other and remember that it has as much of an impact as if you're having a conversation too um, so there's got to be some, I mean, you know, I represent a free speech organisation. We want free speech, We, but that means having debate and dialogue and ensuring that is done in a way that isn't leading to hate, but to sure. actual grown-up conversation. And I think that's what's missing right now. Good work. Um, Ruth, lovely to speak. Thank you. We will speak again, I'm sure. That's Ruth Smith, Chief Executive at the Index on Censorship. That's a non-profit organisation campaigning. Uh, and defending free expression worldwide. She's also a former Labour MP, you may remember. Um, Is debate dead? Well, the Dawn Butler story is an interesting one because last month uh, Dawn Butler went to the police speaking after speaking out over the, the torrent of violence and racist abuse she received for defending Black Lives Matter protests. One email reportedly sent her said, there will come a time when you can't breathe and we will all be happy, while another allegedly said... Come the revolution, you will be one of the first. Now, I don't know what kind of fully formed adult would write that to um, somebody you don't know. Um, And I will sort of gender distinguish here why a man would write that to a woman you don't know for some reason does make that a whole load worse. Um, It is threatening, it's violent, it's also illegal. That isn't utilising free speech. That's illegal. That, That would get you, land you a spell in the chiller if you were collared for that kind of stuff. Now, I can say that Dawn Butler it cuts one of the most ridiculous figures on those green benches in the Houses of Parliament. It is a, I don't know what she got her degree in, hot air, one has to assume. I've never heard such vacuous nonsense and guff come out of one mouth in my life. And believe me, the competition is pretty stiff over there in Westminster. Um, I think she's largely a ridiculous character as a politician. I'm sure, she's a lovely person to knock around with and you know and have a drink with maybe. That is my right to say that. I base that on the areas that she speaks about that I disagree with. Okay, I think she is the worst of all things when it comes to a politician. That's not about her being a female. It's not about her being a black woman. It's not about any of those things. And I certainly don't want her to die because I don't much rate Dawn Butler MP. That's the debate we're allowed to have. You're not allowed to have the other one about wanting to kill her. That's just wrong. Well, I mean, if you follow it through, it's murder. And I think we all know what happens there. Um, And that distinction shouldn't need to be made. It sometimes does. And that letter, the open letter, did sort of touch on that distinction between, you know, extremist kind of language and what is genuine quality debate. But where has it gone? Where is it heading? 0344 499 1000. You're listening to Ian Collins on Talk Radio. It's